recording started. Councillors, it's over to you. OK. Uh, right. Th uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we have uh, an online ACOX Green Water Forum meeting. Um, hope you all had, had a reasonable summer, such as it was, and are ready for the, uh, the joys of autumn and winter. And I'll reassure that there will be no power cuts and no, no food shortages in the run-up to Christmas. <laughs> if, you, if you want any candles, I should be selling those at, at, 10, at 10 pounds a box. <laughs> I've got some uh, from under the stairs from my parents. <laughs> Can you still use them, man? <laughs> no, they're still in the tin box. Oh, <laughs> There you go, it's just as good as they were. No, I can be out on the street corners. <laughs> See? <laughs> With you. There's, there's money in it yet. Yeah. Anyway, th thank you. Well, welcome all. Uh, uh, I think it's about, about my turn to chair this meeting. Um, we've got a handful of residents present. Um, I just need to tell you that the uh, meeting is being recorded and will be available for future playback to the council website. Um, Item three is supposed to be about celebrating communities fund and a project proposal presentation. Beverly, would you like to tell us why that's not happening? Please. Yes, yes, Council. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, hope you're all well. Now, tonight we should have had a presentation from um, I think it's from Kyneton's group, um, the Young People's Project for um, about the celebrating communities fund. They've actually put in. Um, a project proposal that should have been presented to yourselves tonight. Um, just going back a step, um, every ward has been given a pot of money. Um, all 69 wards have been given a pot of money as part of um, the Commonwealth Games Celebrating Communities Fund, and that's to help celebrate the legacy of the Commonwealth Games taking place next year, as you know. So, um, <clears throat> so people within the you know groups, residents were invited to you know this pot of money available. Um, we're doing, you know, details on the website and I can send some more details out following the meeting as well. And the idea is obviously to sort of celebrate the legacy of the Games and that could be doing lots of things, different things in your area with a Commonwealth Games theme. Now, um, I think it was Kyneton's group, the Young People's Project, I think they'd actually put in um, a project proposal and that should have been presented tonight. But... Um, our coordinator, the project coordinator, who was help, who had been helping to present, um, helping Kyneton to present that um, proposal, isn't available tonight, unfortunately. So we're going to have to defer that, unfortunately. Um, so my apologies for that. But what I will do um, following the meeting is I'll just send out the details again to everybody on the mailing list about the Commonwealth Games and the fund, really, more the fund than, than the games itself. So I will send that out following the meeting so you can actually see what it is you need to do. And, you know, other people, you know, obviously like yourselves, Veronica, and your groups as well, to just have a think about whether or not you want to apply for some of the money to do activities in, um, in the ward. We have had quite a lot of discussion of this in the past, haven't we, Beverly, if you remember? Yeah. <clears throat> And yes. I personally like to just support Kyneton because we originally, um, you know, set up that for the youth and it would just be nice to carry it on. Anything to do yeah. with Kyneton, I think just I'd like him to have all the money. Because <laughs> he's doing <laughs> a wonderful yeah. job and that's the big need, isn't it? Well, I yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think the maximum they can actually, the maximum grant anyone can apply for is ten thousand pounds. So, you know, there's still some there'll still be money left. In, in, in your pot for ACOX screen. I think you're probably on, um, I need to double check, but I think two member wards generally, I think there were sort of, I think it was out, you were allocated about 28,000, but I'll double check on that and let you know. But, um, you know, so kind, so so a group, the maximum you can actually apply for is up to 10,000 pounds. So there is still some money left to do other things as well. So, um, so yes, I appreciate your comments and your support. Um, but yes, you know, that, you know, you can do other things or other groups can do other things, apply to do other things as well. Can I uh, share, uh, and Beverly, if I may, uh, Dave said, well, I've got to be nervous for him. 
on the subject of uh, content in the single and HX Green Youth, um, I uh, received a report from them and I was really inspired by what they're doing. Um, and not, I call them unsung heroes because they're struggling around there. The only way they can operate is by begging uh, for money to uh, continue in their operations. And the, the other thing is, Beverly, if not been able to submit there this evening, could that, would that have any effect on the uh, feasibility of them going forward? No, absolutely not. I mean, what's going to happen is Neil de Costa, who's, who's the uh, facilitator who, for Yardley, he is going to contact both councillors and Kyneton, um to discuss another date. And obviously, and then what we will do as well is to let everybody else know, because what we need people to do is to attend that meeting right. and to voice your support. So what we'll need is for you to spread the word once that meeting is set up, to spread the word and to get as many people as possible to join the meeting, whether it's online or in person. We're not quite sure how that will happen yet, but as many people as possible to come along and to show your support to Kyneton's project and also any other project that you think that that might have put in um, a proposal and you think is worthy so yeah. just spread well, the word once we've got it all set up spread the word and get as many people as possible to join and show their support Pat well, has just put something in the chat box um all the details and all the links about um the celebrating um communities fund so that's in the chat box, but I will, I'll also send some stuff out as well following the meeting. Well, that'll be tomorrow morning, but I'll send some stuff out. Uh, I'm just going to just quickly. I was going to raise oh. um, the uh, the Green News uh, to give credit to them at this meeting of the ward, um, and uh, because really, what quite honestly, folks, what they're doing is doing the job that the government and the local authorities should be doing, uh, and we know what the problem is there. So, uh, but nobody's, uh, I may have got it wrong, but I, I, I feel that they're stuck on their own out there, backing away and uh, supporting our, and inspiring our young people. And Kyneton is certainly doing a good job in that direction and he needs our support. And I don't know about the other, other wards in the city, but um, we haven't got a, a local authority youth uh, service, have we? We have, yes. Have we? we have, but it is, it is very limited. It is certainly not what it was a decade ago or beyond that, no. Um, um, I, I, I think I could speak behalf of Roger as well. Um, Kyneton does a fantastic job there. Um, I think it's one of the best bits of investment we've done as, yeah. as a pair of councillors to put the money in to help start yeah. that up. Yeah. And yeah. they've yeah. taken it from there to uh, really a fantastic bit of work. Um, that delivered a brilliant program over yeah. this summer and last summer with uh, uh, feeding. I can't recall how many, how many children it was. Um, don't know if you can remember, Roger or Dave, you got the thing in front of you. <laughs> yeah, it's the quiz question. It was a how many lot. kids was it? But it, it was a lot, a lot of kids locally. And no, you did great work there. It, it is. It, it, they, they, they did a fantastic work. And, and they bring in more money to keep supporting it. I think that that's that's the real success that... We get some seed corn funding from the council through us, and they've taken it on. And that was an example of how our project should work. And I'd love to have more money to give them. I'm sure we will be able to support their project. Thank you, yeah. But I think it would be wrong of us to prejudge things till we, till we see the presentation. Is there a time but, limit on it, John? Is there a, Beverly, is there a time limit? Uh, Beverly. Beverly, where the... Right, so so what we actually need, at the moment, I think Kyneton's project is in round one, so that's why we wanted to present, um, round, what we've done, we've divided the funding into two rounds, round one and round two. So round one has closed in terms of applications, but round two has now opened. So round two opened, I think it was the 9th of September, <clears throat> and we can receive applications or propose applications, stroke proposals, up to the 30th of November this year and then what will happen is um, we'll set the meetings up for round two um, and bring those to be early next year with a view to um, those projects being delivered within <clears throat> within next year I've just double checked the amount for ACOC screen yeah. and you're very lucky you've got 35,000 yeah. so there's more than enough 
to to go around and to do lots of good things in the ward. So um, so now we're Kyneton that was in um, round one. So we're now saying to you as residents, get your thinking caps on. I'll send the information out, and you're now looking to apply for some funding in round two. And you've got between now and the 30th of November to sort of put something in. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, what has the answer in the chat? There are 2,186 hot meals over the summer. <laughs> With, that's 134 children. And that's 134 kids that may have missed out on a hot meal over the summer holidays. And that wasn't the only scheme working in the ward. I know there were others, as one of the Bills, there were a number of work, working across, across the, the patch. Uh, that was a big investment in making sure that the kids in Birmingham actually got fed over the, over the, over the summer holiday. It's, a, it's the time holidays when they, they often don't get the, the food they need. Oh. So um, all praise to Kaija and everybody else who's running one of those schemes. So there were, there were several across the piece. Right. Um, there's nothing else on that piece. Um, local updates. Uh, just can't see that PC Kaku's yet joined us. Uh, there are guests in the lobby. Have they ever been let in? Yeah, they've been let in now. What I'll try and do while, while you're doing your updates, I will okay. try and contact um, PC Kaku just to um, send him a gentle reminder that, that he's needed. So. I'll leave you to carry on while I do that. Okay, <coughs> it's, it's possible, of course, you may have been called away to something else. Yeah. Um, so, I, I will just uh, drop in and this works, share this with you. Um, take a second to update. Um, so I said at the start of the meeting, we've I've, I've, I've literally arrived literally hot foot from uh, the Chelsea Flower Show. Um, my train got in just before quarter quarter seven. Uh, we Birmingham City Council has yet again won a gold medal, uh, and we beat we beat a number of people who didn't get gold medals, but uh, we have a, a one of the, one of the largest stands in the hall. Uh, all those flowers are grown in our nurseries. Uh, the, they are, it is assembled by Birmingham City Council staff. It's paid for and sponsored by Veolia, so there's no cost to the council in, in doing it. But uh, to say it's well received um, is, is, is putting it mildly. Uh, while we're on the stand today, dozens of people coming up to, to admire what, what the team have achieved there. Um, and it's it's a really great achievement. That's our, that's our ninth gold medal in a row. We're going back next year, next May for our tenth, um, with, with a, a Commonwealth Games themed um, garden, and and the theme from that garden will then come back into Birmingham and be, and form part of the theme for the whole Games event. Uh, and this, this one was partly designed by uh, Fluella Benjamin, building on her garden two years ago. Yeah. Which, uh, and one two years ago, actually won the, the, the it was a cup awarded to all, to local authorities. And there aren't many. We are the only one that does Chelsea, but there are other RHS events around. There's Tatton, there's one in one in, in uh, Malvern, one in Cardiff, and the other other authorities enter into other events. But, but we won the overall cup for our. Uh, stand, which was designed by Fluella Benjamin, and that, that is the gold medal. It's not really, it's not actually a medal. It's not very exciting. It's a bit of card, but it is a gold medal, and we, we, we that's, that's our ninth. So, really proud of that. It's putting, it's showing Birmingham doing something that a lot of authorities don't do. I was talking to somebody on the stand from Belfast, and they say that that that, you know, that they've seen a huge rundown of, of their parks over there because the money isn't there. And this is something that we are one of the few people still able to do this at this standard. And just to give you an idea of the work involved, there, there was a stand next door which was smaller than ours, um, covered in roses, a, a rose grower. And it had taken them 6,000 roses to produce enough 
that were timed right to, to be in bloom for the flower show. Oh. But that's the amount, amount of work it is to get stuff ready for this. Uh, John, can I just mention Birmingham? Because uh, I'm sorry to interrupt me. No, uh, go on. But uh, it's good to be able to celebrate Birmingham and be associated with it. You know, there's too many times we're moaning about the place, but it's, it, it's good to be able to be and be proud to be to be associated with the city when they do things like that. And when they used to have Kings East and well and whatever, the city when it does good things, we need to celebrate it. I know it's been under difficult pressures over recent years, but um, yeah, I still believe in it. Excellent. And I think all credit, and I know you've said it yourself, but you're involved with it. But all, uh, certainly from the neighbourhood forum, all credit to the city and what they're doing on a difficult situation. Thanks. Thanks, David. Um, I mean, I'm only involved with it, and I'm accountable for it. Uh, my knowledge of plants and flowers is. Basically, that's a tree, that's grass. Uh, beyond that, it, it's not great. Uh, my wife actually once labels plants uh, uh, with, with stickers on the fence. We, not not a weed, so I wouldn't pull it up. So uh, I, I, I have no knowledge. My dad was like that. But I have people who know what they're doing, so uh, I, I'll need them to look after that. Uh, also, oh, I almost forgot for going on this, this, this picture, but uh, we also won a gold medal, I believe, or some gold award for the uh, in bloom. Yes. Which, which is excellent. Uh, again, that, that's becoming something of a, a regular event. Just something else we've we got to announce locally. Uh, we opened up the, uh, officially opened, we opened, opened a few weeks, we opened up the uh, reuse centre down at Tisley uh, yesterday. And um, that's where they're going to try and intercept items that are still of value. Uh, um, and that, that, could, that could be furniture. But there's a very nice Marshall amp in there. If you got, need one for your guitar, 40 quid. Decent size, decent size Marshall amp if you want to get down and buy it. Um, <laughs> fully guaranteed. I, I was tempted but for, for one of my sons, but I thought, no, my, my wife wouldn't appreciate the noise. Um, so that, that's up and running now, and that, that's that will help intercept stuff and, and stop stuff going to waste. And um, we've got one of a similar type work, working up at Sutton Coalfield, and it's amazing what they catch that could go in the tip. Uh, the standard one for me was that they, they, they stopped a bloke who was taking a, a brand new lawnmower in, into the tip. He bought it, got it home, and being Sutton Coalfield, um, the lawnmower was too small for his garden. <laughs> So rather than as he used it, rather than take it back, he binned it, and that lawnmower was saved and uh, put uh, um, and put out for, for reuse. And in, in there, they got fully tested and guaranteed electrical items, furniture, anything, bikes. There are a lot, lot of bikes coming in there. And they're working with a, a, a community interest company to um, put, offer free servicing and support for those bikes. So uh, that, that's brand new. That's just that's opened up at uh, Tisley. Uh, I've had a, had a heck of a week. I uh, also need to remind you that the the national um, bidding round for tickets in the Commonwealth Games has, I think, seven days still to go. Uh, I, I was dragged over to uh, Perry Bar yesterday to see the development there, um, look at the, at the the way the Alexander Stadium has been transformed. The, the, the track is now down for the practice track. Um, and the, the the two big big uh, stands are up and, and looking ready to be fitted out. Um, the track isn't the main track isn't down yet, but it looks to be well on course for next next year, hopefully. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you're looking, if you do, we didn't get any tickets out of the um, west out of the Birmingham West Midlands section. There is a national stage where you can still bid in now, so that's quite seven days seven eight days to run. Uh, and speaking of bids. The Business Improvement District ballot has just started. Uh, that goes out to all the businesses within the, the bid area, and they get a vote. And to, to continue, the bid has to win 50% of the votes by number, but also 50% of the votes by area. Uh, so by, by, by the square meter of each, what they call her, 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 
so that that's running now. If you've got any sway with um, the shop owners down there, get them to back the bid because that means extra security. It means uh, extra extra street cleansing, and it means the bid the, the businesses down there have got one single voice to speak to the council and try and get stuff done. And Sandy's been a really good uh, bid manager down there, permanently on the backs of Roger and me. But that that's her job, and she's very good at it. So uh, if you have any sway with 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 our our retailers down there, get them to to uh, uh, support uh, the the bid. Um, another news about ACOX Green. It's about to get <coughs> a a permanent uh, beat officer. <coughs> Sorry, working in the retail area. Uh, Andy Collis, who's been around for a while in ACOX Green, um, was previously the a retail officer over in Kings Heath. Uh, will be assigned to the working a mix of uh, of, the, of early and late uh, day shifts um, to provide a. A, a more regular presence of the police in ACOX Green. I think we are the only large retail area without a uh, police officer operating out of there, and we're going to have that uh, over the next few weeks. I think I'll, t- I'll take a little break there. Roger, do you want to come in? Uh, so, um, just on the sort of planning licensing side, um, I think many of the people here will be familiar with. Um, HMOs and Station Road, um, and just the update that is that uh, number 32 has a fresh application in, which is um, for an eight bed HMO instead of a 10 bed, which does provide it with significantly more um, shared internal space, which is a lot better. There's still concerns about the amount of external amenity space, um, but it's, um, yeah, if, if it does go through like this, that's a victory for, you know, everybody who stood up and said, 10 is too much, we don't like it. Um, the um, update on number, on the other side of the road, opposite number 31, is that that's gone to appeal. Um, so that was turned down after local opposition, um, and they've now um, appealed to the National Inspectorate. So we will see what the inspector says. The inspector did actually back up the decision to turn down number 32, so we'll see if uh, we get the same decision there. Um, and we've also got, um, I think the other sort of controversial one is um, an application by Pizza a Gogo to um, keep Go going until the middle of the small hours of the night, um, open till, I think it's three. 3:30 a.m. Um, three o'clock. Yeah. Three o'clock. Um, and that's. I mean, technically, that is outside Acock Green. Well, it is outside Acock Green War, but it's literally on the other side of um, Fox College and Acock Bus. And it is open, and it does cause the kind of problems that people um, are concerned about with something being open that late tonight. And it will have an effect on the residents of Acock Green, particularly those in the uh, flats on Fox College Road overlooking it. Um, so um, I know a number of people, including myself, have put opposition to that in, and it will go to licensing shortly. Um, and we, I mean, the other thing I think that people continue to be concerned about clearly is um, the status of the exempt accommodation um, scandal. I think I'll just call it a scandal, leave it like that. Um, we... Um, are coming towards the end of the pilot programme, which is a pilot um, government funded in six local authorities, including Birmingham. Um, and that is coinciding with um, a scrutiny report being done by the Overview Coordinating Scrutiny Committee, which I sit on. And we've got our final meeting on that um, on Friday, where we Get all the evidence so hopefully um, we will be able to coordinate um, very strong messages both from the city council scrutiny committee but that will also I would imagine tally with findings of the pilot which is cross agency um, and um, that will fingers crossed 
if things work the way they should, hopefully lead to much better regulation of that market. But, you know, we've got a while to go before we get there. And in the meantime, I'm sure John and myself, as well, of course, the local um, police and so on, other agencies will keep fighting we can, uh, all we can to um, keep the, that sector of the housing market um, under as much control as it is possible to do at the moment. So yes, that's that's me for the time being. I I do just have uh, one other item to share with you. Um, I quite hang on this now. This is quite good. Um, last week saw the first visit to ACOC screen of our new initiative of the Mobile Household Recycling Centre. That rocked up on Dolphin Lane and uh, spent, spent the morning there. I, I, know, I know you went down, Roger. I, I went down a couple of times. Um, it was frankly a huge success, as it has been across the city. Um, People can bring their their waste to to the site, and we'll, we will either sort of, sort the stuff for recycling, or uh, stuff that can't be recycled in, into the uh, compactor at the back there. And then we're now bringing in a third vehicle. So again, if we get anything that is worth reusing, we can take it away to the reuse site and uh, put it back in uh, back into the community. Um, we even even had what one of the local residents brought. A tray with a, with a pot of tea and and cups and saucers. I mean, the, the, the crews are not used to cups and saucers. Um, out, out to keep keep the workers operational for a couple of hours, um, but really huge success as it has been across the city. Uh, we've now got all four of these in Birmingham, so that they'll be rolling out across the entire city. Uh, but uh, so something that, that we'll, we'll see again in ACOX Green. We will perhaps see it less in other wards because this is going going where the need is, but we will be around here on a regular basis. So that's that's the other initiative we just should just say we've started. Um, that's that for me. Anything? Any questions or any comments? Yes, Francis. You're muted, Francis. You were speaking. Still muted, Francis. Thank you. Oh, ah, thank, gotcha. thank you very much, John. Thank you. And firstly, delighted to hear that work is continuing on the housing matter. Uh, it's wonderful to hear all the good news from Chelsea and actually even more so from our local bid and our local um, ACOX Green and Bloom, which we all enjoy on a daily basis. So I, I do pay tribute to everybody who's worked on that, councillors, bid committee and the In Bloom team. Um, my section of Wesley Road, I live in Overly Avenue, and for many years now, you'll be tired listening to me um, alerting to the emerging problems in a small stretch of Wesley Road between the school and the Wesley Hotel. That is quite disgraceful, the exact opposite to Chelsea or to the In Bloom. One set of residents picking up litter, and um, it was so distressing to read in The Observer what I have been experiencing for the last four years, the actual profiteering on the poor of Birmingham. And uh, so I'm pleased that the scrutiny group is working, clearly disappointed that it's so late in the day and that the wheels are so slowly. And I mean, I'm not being critical of anybody here, but I will say, how can we help? Can we provide evidence? Because my neighbours here in Overly Avenue are good people. They're welcome uh, people who are down on their luck. They recognise that the Wesley Hotel is doing a wonderful job for families in need and those families are welcome. We now know we have refugees from Afghanistan and what's the problem? There's no place for the big families to go because there are no large houses that are affordable. Wesley Road had beautiful family houses that had gardens. In Victorian times we knew people needed light and space the development on Wesley Road over the last 20 years, but the last 10 years in particular, 
has favored no one. The tenants are living in appalling conditions. The uh, absolute pavement parking, overcrowding, the most reasonable and peaceable of people are threatening to take the law into their own hands because they're just tired of seeing no impact when they go about things through the proper channels. And we've had more success with one neighbour who tracked down one landlord, knew where he lived and went to his house and spoke to him outside his own front door than we have had from years of politely attending local meetings, making our points, and there's no criticism of anybody local implied here. I recognise our councillors do a very good job. But equally, when you go to your committee, can you tell them that ordinary citizens saw this coming years ago? Ordinary citizens who would welcome people who are down on their luck or who are in need of good housing, but who equally recognise that decent accommodation is needed and who totally resent lining the pockets of those profiteers. That's just not fair to anyone. So what I'm asking is, if we can help, tell us how. We're happy to sweep the streets, we're happy to pick up the litter, but we cannot go into private property and clean up. And that's what it would take, because two of those multi-occupancies in particular look like an open tip from mattresses, supermarket trolleys, overloaded bins. How shall we ever even begin to meet our recycling targets if we don't address that? Every single element of council goals and national goals are being thwarted every day. Now, I hate to come to meetings and be a dismal voice because actually, believe it or not, I'm an optimistic person. And if I wasn't, I'd have given up years ago. And I do recognise the hard work of those who've worked on this for years. But please, can you try to say it doesn't take brain of Britain? Actually, it's there for all to see. And it breaks my heart that I had to read on The Observer what I've been seeing coming for many, many years. And I don't have any special insight. Francis, I don't disagree with a single word you've said. I mean, that it, and you, you've seen it coming. You, you've been quite vocal about it, and rightly so. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't. I don't think you were the only one that saw it yep. coming. Um, I think perhaps we, we, we've all been surprised by just how fast that market has, has exploded in Birmingham over the past few years. And it is a peculiarly Birmingham issue. It's not not unique to us, but we have a particular problem with with that supported housing. And you're right; it's not about the people who live in it because the people who live in that supported housing need that support but they need proper support they don't need a handyman turning up once a week just just to say are you all right yes box ticked i can go away again now and that's, that's what happens Down for loading. sorry Down for loading. well that's a whole different argument um <laughs> which, which i am a big supporter of social housing um Roger, you, you want to come in, but uh, I think we're the same, same wavelength here. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're of a mind on, on this issue. I mean, I just, um, uh, well, what I will say is I actually managed to get to speak um, to the uh, regulator. Um, and I actually got the impression that they were, they were becoming, I don't think this was true a year ago, but I think they have now become as frustrated as we are as they've seen the evidence of what's going on, you know, because they are bound by the regulations. It's the regulations that are the problem, not, not a lack of willingness to do you know, what the regulations say. Um, and I managed to give them a couple of um, little examples of things that they weren't actually aware of. One was that um, people are now beginning to say, there's an application for an HMO planning approval in my road. I don't really want it, and the rules say we're probably over the limit, so we could oppose it, but I think I'd better accept it because otherwise it could flip into exempt, and that would be worse. And they, they hadn't, I said, look, that's what's going on now in my ward, and they thought, oh, gosh, I haven't heard of that before, but can see why people might think that. That's useful to know. Um, and the other thing, which was um, this sort of added twist that it, I hadn't picked up before, 
which is that the registered providers, and there are some in Birmingham that have you know, multiple thousands of properties, but to be a registered provider and therefore be exempt of any local authority regulation, you just have to have one property that um, provides care. Um, so all your other properties can be standard HMOs, but none of those are subject to normal HMO regulation because you are a registered provider. So, you know, it, it's it's sort of not just that people who say they provide this care, but we all know don't really, but they just have to have one property that does this, and then all their and then because they've got this status of being a regulator of, of being an exempt provider, they don't they're not subject to local to local authority provision but if you go to the rsl they'll say well that property isn't um you know isn't one that we have to worry about so they that those properties are completely exempt of anything well the only regulation there is on those properties is that the providers are subject to management and financial um regulation by the rsl but the actual properties themselves are not regulated by anybody so it's sort of even worse than we thought. Not that we, I mean, we know the RSL doesn't actually do any on-prem. Hang on, Roger. Say, say me, to, so, sorry, just to be clear. So you're saying yeah. that if, if I own one, if I own a thousand, a thousand houses, yep. and one of them provides care, as yep. uh, supported housing, mm -hmm. all the rest of my houses, even though they are run as traditional HMOs, yep. are... Exempt, exempt accommodation. There is oh, no exempt local regulate. authority control. Yeah, and, 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 the, and, the, and, and the housing regulator says not not do that either, Gov. They're not yeah, because they're housing. just HMOs. So we don't we don't we don't look after those. So the only the only <laughs> it's just surreal. I mean, I said that's madness, isn't it? And they said, well, those are the regulations, councillor. Um, but we do share your frustrations. That was about as far as they were willing to go. Um, so there, you know, there you are. Um, just utterly, utterly bizarre, and nobody, you know, nobody would credit. I mean, I think part of the, I have two explanations of why it's taken so long to get um, active interest in it, and you know, people starting to say this must change. One is that this basically doesn't happen in London, um, and that's because property prices are higher there, so people are actually, you know, the economics of it don't work so well. London, but they work really well where you've got particularly large properties, but we know at a much lower price. So, um, you know, Birmingham and a number of other cities, Bradford, Blackpool, I think, Bolton, um, maybe you have to be a city beginning with B for this to be the case. But because it isn't in London, unfortunately, in our country, if something isn't going on in London, it has less, um, less visibility, sadly. Um, and Equally, I think, you know, there have been a few other things nationally going on that have sort of taken government bandwidth away from dealing with what you might, what should have initially just been like a housekeeping issue. There's a gap in the regulations, we ought to fill it. Um, but because they've been concerned with, um, you know, first Brexit and then COVID, there's been less bandwidth to deal with those sorts of issues. But hopefully, hopefully, we are, have now got their attention. Um, and the combination of the pilot report and you know, the city council report will um, move things forward. So, I mean, just just one other example that I was some, someone emailed me this week and said, I'm in an exempt property. Um, I want to work, but the provider has told me that if I get a job, they'll throw me out because it doesn't. It means they'll get less money. That how utterly absurd, it, it, it couldn't be more absurd than public money is basically being used to give an incentive to stop people working. Absolutely bonkers. Francis. You muted. Does the local authority have the power to pass a bylaw to hold those people to account for environmental damage because the damage to the environment of the absolute ugly um, dumping on their it's on their property that 
clearly visible on the outer circle bus route where um, hopefully people will be travelling by bus to our Commonwealth Games. It's not the best image for the city. Uh, in all honesty, I'd be ashamed of it. I'm proud of this city. It's my adopted city. I absolutely love it. It's been good to me. And, but I would be ashamed of anybody travelling on the brilliant number 11 bus service, which I love, on my little stretch of it. And I, I would honestly, I would clean it if I could, John, but I can't go onto their premises. Could there be a bylaw that holds them to account for environmental damage? Or could they be shamed in the way that we've approached one landlord because we happened to find out where he lived? Could somebody find out where the others live and in some way name and shame them? I don't know about the bylaw. I've got a horrible feeling the answer would be no, because I think there is legislation that you could tackle them with, but be, I'll be looking at perhaps the, the planning legislation, but you can't because they're exempt. Um, and they, they would impact the neighbours' neighbors amenity. Um, Spoiling the enjoyment of the amenities. Yeah, going but to uh, that, the they're exempt. Properties. They're exempt. Right. Uh, and some of these people have no shame. You know, the, so, some of them are not nice people, to put it mildly. Oh, they're, 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 they're nice people, John. Yeah, nice no, people, they're, bluntly, they're, 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 there are crooks laundering money through this. Uh, yes, I, I, as I say, I'm, I'm well aware of that, John, but I find it very hard to accept that anybody is above the law. We pride ourselves, we teach children in school about democracy, the rule of law, of it applying equally to all people. And when it doesn't, it is incumbent upon all of us to try and do something about it. The law does apply to them, but there isn't a law that covers this. So we need to change bad yes, law. Yes, 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 we do. The government need to be convinced. And I, I think the feedback I'm getting sort of informally is they're not convinced about it. And they need to be that this is a problem. This is a massive problem of communities like ours. And what I said, it, it's, it's about where it stacks up financially. This wouldn't work in Sutton such, such Coalfield. It wouldn't work over large parts of Solly Hull because you get more value out of a whole property than you do out dividing it up. It does work across great parts of Birmingham, Acox exactly. Green, so Erdington, Stockland Green. It makes sense. Why. Yes, We're yes. We're strongly and dependent upon our MP to yes. raise well, our, our MP this can and will raise it. And and, is, and, and there is, a, there is a, a campaign with yeah, with, with the Labour Party to try and get something done on this. But we, we, we have a, a government that at the moment doesn't want to regulate the sector and it needs to be regulated. I'm I'm stunned by what Roger said about about the exemption you could have a complete exemption on your on your HMOs by having one supported housing property, and that just seems that that just seems mad. I genuinely can't comprehend how we can have a situation where that happens. But it's not they're above the law. There is no law that covers them. Thank you, and I'm sorry to have taken so. No, much it, it, I just I think we need to be clear how frustrated we are as well, and you know. As I keep saying, I have a sport housing property, 50 metres across the road from me. I've got an HMO next door to me. Neither are any problem because they're both well run. And that's how they should be. Uh, if I want to sell you, sell you a pint of beer, I have to get a licence. I can't run a pub without being, about being tested as being a fit and proper person. If I want to, to rent you a, a, a one room bed sit, all I need is to own a house. And that doesn't seem right. But that's what the law says. So until that gets changed, we will keep building the evidence. We will keep making the points. But believe me, it's not a lack of will on behalf of the local authority to take action. It's just we don't have the levers to pull. OK, I think that, that's if that we'll, we'll put that one to bed for the time being. I am sure we will come back to it. And please, Francis, don't stop being angry about it because it keeps <laughs> us going. Um, Go on. But I, 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 if there are things that would help, do say. Yes, David. Uh, thanks, John. While we're talking about the law, there's high-ranking police officers who have uh, raised these issues. That I've seen their reports, and one was in fact from the chief constable. They're also very, very concerned about these um, exempt properties 
and certain um, um, the um, HMOs that are being controlled by undesirable people and certainly encouraging um, county lines uh, as far as drugs. There's no control over them, That's the, and you've mentioned that. Why can't all the people who have to implement law who are trying to keep our society together on the right track, uh, why are they up against it? Uh, 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 it's as if we've got a, a fifth column sort of, uh, involved destroying our communities. There's something wrong somewhere. And if, and if, it's, if, if the high-ranking police officers are also concerned, surely somebody will take note somewhere. Uh, have we got no say at all? It's incredible. It's like, it, it's like an Alice in Wonderland. I mean, <laughs> yes, it is. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm speaking as what Roger has just told us. Um, but yeah, the, the, until the government decides this law needs changing, it ain't going to change. Yeah, and well, we'll keep having this discussion. Yeah. But it, what, the situation we've got now, in fact, I think came about before this government. The, oh, the, yeah. Uh, I, I think supported housing has been, has been... It hasn't been a problem for a long time because yeah. largely it was it was well, well run. It was run by charities and by proper registered social landlords. And then people realised that you can make a lot of money out of it. And Birmingham right players are having to find out they're supporting... The, the poor soul coming from other authorities uh, yes. and London coming in yes. and uh, being accommodated you know well fair enough but it's, <laughs> so, it's something wrong somewhere well it, it's not fair enough it's not fair that we, that people should be dumped 100 miles away from, from their homes into Birmingham just because it's cheaper but that, that raised a whole issue about social housing and we haven't got time for that one now um, I don't even notice, but I think we've got a police officer involved. In, I yeah. had noticed, yes. Um, we, 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 have, we, we have the right to remain silent. So we, we, we take it up now and, and let uh, uh, BC Kaku uh, speak to us. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? We're very well. And uh, w w welcome from one of the interview rooms in the station there. Yeah, apologies. I had technical issues at home, so I had to come into this, to the station to do... Well, thank you for coming in, but uh, over to you. OK, um, well, I'll start with good news first. So obviously uh, for ACOX scheme, we've had quite a few good arrests. Um, uh, we've had a warrant uh, locally on Rye Grove uh, where we've obtained about 15, 20,000 pounds worth of cannabis and cash. Uh, had someone arrested for that. Uh, we've also had uh, quite a few arrests around Pemberley and Curtis Gardens in relation to ASB and drug use. Um, so that's another piece of good news. Uh, also, we've had another warrant uh, for on Warwick Road where we found 60 plants, a large scale cannabis production. Um, we also had the summer fete in Acox Green Park uh, held alongside the Romanian and Polish cultural groups in, in Acox Green, and that went really well. Um, so good turnout for that, even though the weather wasn't amazing, but it was lovely. Uh, plan to do another one in the future um, and have a few more stalls and events and things like that. Um, other news, PC Collis, uh, who a lot of you probably do know, is going to be now a full-time officer based in Acox Green Village. Um, so he'll be dealing with anything directly with the village shoplifters and uh, any SB within the village. Obviously, we will support him with that, but um, that will be his role uh, ongoing from now. Uh, and I think that starts next week. Um, trying to think there's anything else at the moment. Do you have any questions? I think that's it for the moment. God, they're all quiet. <laughs> Are you still having your um, new recruits coming through? I know that yes. we have quite a few young, I mean, I've sort of like come for you for six weeks or something and then move on. Are they still doing that? Yeah, we've got, uh, we've actually got some new specials who've arrived, five. Uh, they're going to be shared uh, among the two teams. Um, so they will be accompanying us on shift. Um, special constables are volunteers who give up their spare time to 
do police work. They get trained um, and they get to experience it. Uh, some of them do go on to further join the police force. So that's always a good thing. Uh, we have got some new students who've joined us last week. Unfortunately, that means we've had some students who've left us as well. Um, at the moment, the team is not bad. It's a uh, fairly good standing, but uh, it's a lot less than we used to have. Good. Yeah, it's good to uh, hear that we are putting some time into the neighbourhood policing. It's so, so important that um, it uh, they all seem to get robbed for, to, for officers to go to other support areas. So, uh, no, that's, that's good news, that is. Um, I'll, um, I'll have to, I'll have to um, drop a line to Lee. I've just left him a message to say we ain't got no police at the week in the area. So uh, <laughs> I'll have to uh, put that right. So no, unfortunately, it was a technical issue. Uh, yeah. My laptop wouldn't work, so. Yeah. So when you see him, uh, can you uh, explain? Uh, I'll drop him. I'll drop another line and saying uh, a bit premature, and that you had uh, technical problems and have to go into the nick. Uh, so it's uh, you blame me if he shouts at you. No problems. I'll let him know. So, um, well, I'll tell you what. There's lots of things about the police, but we won't go into it. It's it's probably not the right. Um, Quarter to do that at the moment. Um, but I know that other forces are setting hubs up because they've also done the stupidity of closing police stations. So, because they're trying to build up on neighborhood policing, they've got to, they're making around their area of operation, they're maintaining hubs. Either as existing police stations or other areas, and these hubs are for the, pub, the public, the community, to make contact and see and deal with their neighbourhood police team. You mentioning that um, just now, we are actually um, getting new, uh, younger, like the younger generation involved in uh, policing. So we actually, a lot of us here now are signed up and supporting the cadets who oh. are, are, are the youths who've just maybe out of school and going to college and want to be involved in policing. So we'll be going out with them, patrolling and also giving them talks and experiencing what policing is like for them. Yeah. Well, the problem is, you see, over recent years, we've had the comedians in again. You know, some of it was necessary, but it, it's it's a canton, I think, you know, one of the problems. Yeah, you can't, you, we must, a community needs structure. Community needs um, physical contact with each other. You can't, you can't live online all the time. It, it, it's ridiculous. And uh, closing the police station, you, you always have a police station on, on every ice street. Uh, but uh, we've got all these kind of Alice in Wonderland folks involved in uh, policy, and uh, as soon as we get rid of them, the better. Well, um, hey, just so you know, ACOT Screen Police Station for the moment is here to stay. Uh, we've given, so we have been told it's here for a, a period of time. Um, after that, depends what happens, but as far as I know, we're here for a while. Thanks. That's good news. Thanks. Uh, lovely. Could, could I just thank you, um, you for patrolling our Millennium Green now and again, just keeping an eye on us. It's uh, really nice and uh, encouraging to see them on yeah. there. No, we, we, we've been patrolling the Green and the Canal towpaths recently quite a bit. Obviously, there's been a few incidents on the Canal towpaths involving robberies and whatnot. Oh, right. um, so that part of that is we need uh, we need to do a bit few more patrols. So you will see us in a lot of the parks. Uh, I've been out on the bikes myself the last few weeks. So uh, if you see me cycling along the side of the road, please don't push me off. <laughs> Thanks for that. No problems. Well, they used to have motorbikes at one time. Little uh, uh, villa set things they used to go around on. So uh, maybe they'll find you a little motorbike. <laughs> Electric one. That's great. Um, I don't know where we are, John. We're still here. Uh, are you on item four, local update? Not yet. Uh, we are. We've just done the police. Uh, if there's nothing else for PC Carco, I think we let, let's, let's let him go home. Okay, then <laughs> can I just remind the uh, good folk? Hang on. What? Well, you haven't done the hardly Navy scene yet. We haven't got there yet. Oh, all right.
Yeah, no, no, I was going to come to that. I was just going to let, let, let uh, uh, police officer go home. He, 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 he fit, welcome to stay. If, of course, he wishes to go home, that'd be fine. No problem. Thank you very but, much. But, but thank you for coming. If there are any questions or any updates for me, send me an email um, via um, uh, email and I'll, uh, I'll reply back as quick as I can. OK, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, Bye. 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 Right. Um, Beverly, have you got any updates of the Yardley Neighbourhood Network Scheme? Yes, I think they're here. I think Michael's here yeah. on the Michael, call. Uh, Michael. Yes. Hello. Yes, he's there. Bottom corner of my screen there. Hello. Hi. Your turn. Speak up. So we're from um, Neighbourhood Network Scheme. So my name's Michael and this is my colleague Doreen. Um, so we're Disability Resource Centre and Age UK working <laughs> together. Uh, we cover all the wards of Yardley, so all 12 wards, including ACOX Green. And the purpose of Neighbourhood Network Scheme is to enable the activity for the over 50s on the <coughs> local doorstep to um, encourage people to live happy, healthy lives. Um, so we do that by like funding different activities, linking, um, linking community groups up. Um, th things like that. So uh, we've funded some uh, work, some different activities at the moment. So there's Westley Vale Tai Chi going on. Um, so that's Mondays and Thursdays. That's um, on so Millennium that... Green, isn't it, Michael? Oh, that's on our Millennium Green. Sorry, I didn't hear that. It's on the Westley Vale Millennium Green. I'm one of the trustees of the site, and we've got. Um, 40, 40 weeks, haven't we, of uh, funding from yourselves for the Tai Chi, yes. which started, we've probably been going now about sort of six weeks with that. Mm -hmm. and thank you very much for that. No, it's OK. Um, one of the other things we uh, do as well is we've started to uh, put together a community calendar. So that will show all the activities that are available across Yardley. I will pop a link to it in the chat window. It's literally just a Google uh, calendar. Um, so anyone can um, anyone can access that and see what's on there. But if there's any activities that I've missed, please do let us know and we'll add them onto there. That's events as well. Um, other things that we've recently funded is uh, some uh, inclusive dancing. Uh, so that will be one coming up. Um, so that could be seated as well as standing dancing. Um, we've okay. yeah, we've got the uh, pantry as well. The US one. Yes, so the um, Methodist. Methodist Church, that's it. So at South Yardley Methodist, Methodist Church, we've got the uh, pantry run by Oasis. Um, so that's where people pay a small fee um, and then they can get a, a good week's worth of shopping for a small amount. Um, on that one, that runs on Thursdays. Again, the details on that are on the community calendar. We also have a um, project for men um, and it's funded through an organization called Sahili Hub. I'm um, sorry I didn't introduce myself. My name is Doreen um, and I work alongside Michael. So Sahili Hub um, came to us for some funding to support men who are over 50 and with their general health and well-being, especially coming out of COVID, you know, the restriction now is lifted and we haven't really focused specifically on men and supporting them with the general health and well-being and mental health. So Sahili Hub is actually doing this across three constituency. Um, so Yardley, um, Hall Green and also Hodge Hill. Hodge Hill. So they've had money from three lots of different, three different constituency and doing this um, pilot project across the three constituency to support men over 50s. Um, that's going quite well at the moment. Um, at the moment, we are also focusing on the Sheldon and Garrett's Green Ward because there's not many hubs there to carry out activities. 
So we are working alongside Sheldon Library and the community centre. Now the restriction has been lifted and actually trying to support citizens to get back out there in the community. We are also working with um, MIND to support us to deliver some um, workshops around developing confidence um, for people to get back out there. One of the big need that has surfaced to us through the adult social work team is that um, a lot of the clients that they have seen um, are suffering from anxiety issues about getting back out in the local community. So they feel that they need some support. So we're looking at it from a befriending point of view or having a support worker to support them. It's not long term, it's short term in supporting a citizen to either access a social activity, um, you know, shopping, or just spend some time in the home, some quality time befriending and developing people's confidence. So we're looking at those issues at the moment. Other gaps are around carers' needs and people who are caring and need that support. Um, we did have an activity through Midland Mencap, um, but that was running through COVID and it, it was done across all the parks in, in Yardley um, where carers could um, go bike riding and still have that restriction from being involved, you know, with other people. Um, you know, so some people accept, access it, but not many. Um, so we've got still got money in the kitty and we would like people to people that you may meet or dealing with to come to us and maybe look at working with us, developing some activities in their local wards. Any question anybody want to ask? Or make any suggestion? Um, how often can you apply for that uh, grant? Is, are there, is there a time scale for it? The, the funding is for 12 months, yeah. usually. Um, so um, from the onset of you applying and going through to um, grants panel and the funding is approved, and you get your funding, you've got 12 months to complete that project. Um, you can actually apply at any time, can you? Sorry, can you apply at any time? Through that 12 months. Yeah. So we've got until March uh, 2022 um, before we'll um, close up this phase of NNX. Um, okay. It will be extended, but it's also out to tender, so it may not be through um, ourselves, it may be through someone else. Um, but that is open for, uh, they are due to continue it for at least another five years. So it will be around in some form. Ma uh, Michael? Yeah. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dave Treadwell, Neighbourhood Forum. Um, on the Chiardi Neighbourhood Network scheme, you said that another five years or whatever. Do you have a terms of reference? You know, do you have a, uh, do you have a written structure? Yes. Yes, we have the terms of reference for the steering group and the terms of reference for the Yardley Neighbourhood Network Scheme specific. We work with our commission officers um, to develop that. Is that online? Um, Sorry, but uh, is that available online? Is that available to the public? Um, not at the moment, but it's something we can go back and talk to our managers and the community project manager, uh, yeah. the com commissioning officer. Are you, uh, involved, sorry, yeah. are you involved with public money? Of course, the money comes from central government through local 
government. So yes, it is public money, okay. and yes, it can. Um, we can make that known to people. But at the moment, the Yardley one is not put out on local media. But we can ask permission for that to happen. Could I ask for that to happen so that, at, at the ward meeting, please? Yes, uh, um, uh, we'll take it back. Lovely, thanks. And we'll discuss that with senior commissioners Lovely. in BCC, yeah? Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Okay, Got any more questions? No. Uh, well, yes, well, sorry, yes, sorry, well, Martin, uh, John. Yes. Sorry, uh, I've got something to remind you. Go on. The Ward Committee. Well, it's not a committee, the Ward uh, uh, Forum, which is another contentious thing. Because I raised, and I've written to you, uh, trying to get into the uh, depths of the uh, City Council, into their soul. Uh, because um, if we raise things, they're just floating around in the in the in the um, ether, and there are two subjects that I raised on the 9th of June. Uh, I just want an acknowledgement. So if, I know that there's work going on, and I know that our elected members uh, have had some involvement. But on this particular case, there was Rookwood Road Bridge historical case of reported fly tip rubbish, which we know about, which is the Crown uh, the Crown authorities of Crown of States uh, holding things up on there. And because I was asked yep. by our elected our executive members of the forum to raise it at the at council, uh, and I, well, which I did to the uh, to the um, ward the ward forum. And the other thing was um, was a rubbish on. Um, oh come on, sorry, folks. The rubbish on Yardy Road. Um, listen on Yardy Road. We are still receiving ongoing complaints with regards to the regular rubbish and litter on the Yardy Road in the area of the shops between Cottagebrook Road and Elmden Road, which is degrading to the local area. When having such a dirty main road, which services the main access to and from Acre Street, the main problem would seem to be from the accommodation above the shops and businesses not having arrangements for the wheelie bins, but we understand that the council is looking to review a red card system. Why do the landlords have no apparent responsibility for providing facilities for rubbish disposal, which would prevent the wild animals and stray dogs breaking the rubbish bags open and scattering the domestic waste around this public space? Um, members and concerned residents have asked that these matters be submitted to the Acre Green Ward Forum for any possible forward progress and action, these being long ongoing concerns for the local area. But on, there was no acknowledgement of that. And we don't have minutes, do we not have minutes now? No, we haven't no, actually it's, got around to giving minutes, yeah, because it's, oh, sorry to interrupt there. Um, because, no, 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 because, it can't it's, go <laughs> because it's all being recorded and, and put on the web, and, and, and I appreciate it means you have to trawl through. Um, the recording to find it but we haven't been taking any notes as well because we're doing all the things behind the scenes but what we are trying to do and, and this is playing catch up at some point we'd like to just set, sort of take as, as we're going along to take some action notes if we can yeah. while we're doing the meeting so it makes it a little bit easier but because it's all recorded there isn't a requirement for us to to, to take um, notes and minutes and, and to publish those but I do take on board what you say because having to trawl through the recording to find out what you've said can be quite time consuming. Well who's actually uh, the other question is other than, other than the authority of our elected members uh, what authority does the ward board have? Does it have any uh, standing uh, public standing community standing does it have any can it pull any weight? You know, it's no good us raising issues at the ward forum if nothing's done. Right. Well, we've got a couple of couple of points. Um, firstly, well, the, the the issue with the um, Rookwood Road is one of the things going to have to sit there for a bit. I'm afraid because I don't have the powers to get to get the waste removed. 
Yeah. Hopefully, the two new bollards have been installed at the Alexander Road end of the um, of Rookwood Road. Will make it harder for people to get the vehicles down there and and flight it waste over the uh, uh, over the fence. It also helps actually that, that there's a there's a red car that appears to be abandoned uh, across across the end there. That, that's probably an obstacle to anyone getting down there. Unfortunately, the car is uh, currently taxed and MOT, so we can't get it moved. Uh, but that, that is the, the land there is Crown land, and they will not maintain it. Yeah, that, that's 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 the, the policy they have with all the land they hold. They may at some point just disclaim it and say it doesn't belong to us anyway. Uh, Yardley Road. Yes, we need. I suppose we need to do need to do a review of the the red card approach to the to, to the shops. Um, we've we have elsewhere in the ward. We've now issued wheelie bins, I believe, t- uh, to on School Road to the row of shops there. Um, see how that improves things. So, so I, I have recommended that the Yardley Road shops, because actually most of those, not all of them, in that little stretch, the shops and the flats are completely separate. Yeah, uh, th- there isn't actually access. Uh, th- through the shops to the flats um so that so they are completely separate and there is storage space at the back of flats for wheel with wheel bins so i think we can definitely look at giving those removed from the red card and issue with wheel bins and and, and they can uh, use them properly um in the meantime that road should be on one of our uh, additional sack collection rounds we've got nine of those across the city picking up uh, in areas where we have a particular problem with this they're predominantly places like the stratford road coventry road and going on the soho road and so on where you have um properties like this where where for many years the flats had become just storerooms uh, rather than as they used to be the flats where the shopkeepers lived uh, now they then became just storerooms, and then over the past decade or so, they've been brought back into use as housing. Uh, some of which we're aware of, some of which we're not. So there's some work there to do about getting council tax in for people who are living there. Yeah. Um, but uh, a lot, but they, they just don't have, in a lot of cases, storage space for for wheelie bins, uh, or indeed for any rubbish at all. So the, so the residents. I have sympathy for them because they they've got no sort of rubbish, and you wouldn't want to keep a black bag sitting in your your kitchen or your hallway for three or four days. So the next collection rolls around. So I do have some sympathy as to why they, they do put the, the bags yeah. out on the street. But who's got sympathy for the other guy? Uh, well, yeah, yeah it, it's they they have a real problem. The ones in the yard, I think we can resolve by getting them getting them wheel bins in the same way we resolved it with the ones on. Uh, on School Road, and also sorted out some interesting problems with with uh, the the electoral register up there as well, where somebody who's registered at least three properties yeah. um, got that sorted out. Uh, so I think we, we we can get that one sorted. And also also want to look at the uh, row of shops on the Warwick Road Stockfield Road junction uh, as to whether we can get those D red carded and put onto onto wheel bins for the, for the same reason. Um, hopefully we've now got a bit more resource on our enforcement team yeah. to be able to go around and just check that the the retailers do have an appropriate way of disposing their waste because that's that's vitally important that we do that we, we, the reason they haven't got bins is we don't want the retailers or any, any trader uh, disposing of their waste through the, the domestic uh, waste disposal, disposal route because that's not what they, they, they should be doing uh, and there's a risk that they, that, that they will use that. But I think, uh, certainly with the Yardley Road, the shops and the flats are different. And I don't think many shops got access, actually, to, to the backyards of the flats. So um, I think we, we should be getting those on, onto, uh, onto wheel bins. Mm-hmm. Well, don't take this as necessary criticism of our local um, elected members. Uh, but we seriously... Uh, get involved and take charge of local local involvement. And I've, as you know, I've written to the council uh, directly uh, from the neighbour forum about the poor relationship between the communities and the council. 
Uh, and in fact, it was raised in a, in a central government report two years ago. Um, but we don't we we, have, we not don't think we're doing anything about it. You know, you go on about the World Forum; they don't take minutes, and it's recorded. But policymakers, people who can make things happen, um, do they do they listen? Do they do they look at them? And as it gets to the decision makers. Um, I'll give you an example. On the Rookwood Road Bridge historical case, how, when we ask a question from the public, and I've always, uh, I've probably got it wrong here, this democratic accountability, um, and I'll, the, the question that was asked, why the rail authority even sold part of the railway embankment to a private interest is beyond understanding. There's things that are completely, you've mentioned that this meeting tonight, some of the things that go on in this nation are absolutely incredible. It's like a big game, and the people who are shopping all the time are the citizens. And and it's not intentionally. It just seems that it's gone it's gone crazy. Um, it, it, the local authority must be a little example of central government, where it's got all these departments and people don't speak to each other. But what we need on the local area is a structure in place where we can get report back. Even if they tell us to shut up and go away, it, we, we've got this handle. I'd rather have that than not eat anything at all. You know, so that we, the neighbourhood forum put that report in, and we know what's going on. I was asked to do it, and I might as well throw it in the bin. It didn't seem that there's any structure in place to make things happen. I would say actually here, don't forget, well, you, you've got your local councillors yeah. and you've got one cabinet member and yeah. Roger, who is uh, yeah. deputy leader of the Lib Dem group, a key part of scrutiny. Yeah. Uh, and I'll say the, the, the work that, that that scrutiny committee did last year has fed into work that we have delivered, policy that we have delivered this year. Um, I'll be asking them to do some more work on policy in the coming year, which I hope will feed into, into into future work. So you've actually got direct access to policy makers here. And even in opposition, you've got people who can influence policy and, and, and influence changes. So you've got that. Um, I, I know I get invited to go across to other ward committees to go to go and uh, argue the council's corner, and I'll do that. But yeah. in ACOT's Green, you've, you've got people here who genuinely have an influence on policy, and that that equally applies to Roger. Even in opposition, he things he, he has put forward have made a difference. And no, you can't quote me on that. <laughs> so why did they take away the ward? Next leaflet. <laughs> why did they take away the word committee from the ward from the ward committee and call it a forum? Uh, truthfully, I, I, I don't know. I, I've got any thoughts on it. Yeah, go on, put your hand up. Come. Um, I mean, I first of all agree with, you know, what John has just commented on, what John's just said. But equally, I do think David's point is valid as well in that, you know, when I came onto the council, we had, well, until quite recently, we had ward committees, which were official, you know, parts of the official council decision making process. And that went um well it sort of it, it sort of went the, we had the we had the um constituency committees and the ward committees both of which were were a sort of local structure which formally took decisions um that that, that um part of that said part of the fault the capital decision making process and that, that's gone and i do think that while what john has said is perfectly true absolutely true um, equally, we have lost something through that, and I mean, the council is continuing to discuss and debate um, the whole localization agenda. Um, and I very much hope that as part of that, we get back to some uh, system where there is formal local decision making again. Whether that's through individual ward committees or whether we group them together. You know, rather like the old constituency committees one yeah. way or another i hope we get to some system like that it has you know, the the change in the 
broad structure hoisted on us by um, combination of the Kurz Lake report and the Electoral Commission has made that a bit more complicated because we have this combination now one and two member wards. Um, but, you know, it, I'm sure um, minds can find a way around that, maybe by, you know, grouping together group wards that make up a certain number of councils or something, and we could get to that. But um, I do think we need to get to some sort of status where um, you know, formal yeah. decisions are actually made locally. So I agree with you on that, David. Well, you're just saying that for the benefit of the structure of uh, council, not the citizens, um, the, the citizens are seem to be kicked into touch. Um, and I just feel frustrated about it. But no, we carry on, we carry on. Because when I used to attend some of these meetings to become a new one, um, I felt I was part of some a bit of all really. We had the chair and we had the other councillors and we had the police and we had the fire service and, and all the council officers, the housing department. And I thought, goodness me, these people know what they're doing here. Uh, they're the people who, who, who control their local area. The city the council, don't get me wrong, the city council is the only body that can look after us. I don't trust any of the others because they're not even a council. Look what's going on now. For all their faults, I still believe in the city council. It's the only thing that it has for years and years and years looked after me, and I can't kick it into touch. But it, it's just that it's been it's been really uh, falsely it's been damaged over recent years, and it's a bloody crying shame because it was a blooming good council. I'm just going to sort of reinforce what Roger said, because it, 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 we are, depending on if you're lucky or unlucky, this is a two-member ward. Um, there are obviously a lot more one-member wards, and you couldn't have a functional ward committee with a single member deciding things, because that's dictatorship. And while that has its attractions sometimes, um, <laughs> it's not really good for democracy. Uh, so uh, so that is, that is a... A problem. I mean, I'm, I'm not even sure we've got the structure right now. I, I, I wonder whether we're better off having uh, entirely single member wards rather than two member wards. Um, yeah, I know. I, I, I also look at it and think it, it's. I think it is very hard to be a single member in, uh, in a ward if you have additional responsibilities. I generally don't know how the leader of the council functions as a, as a solo councillor and doing the, the leadership role, because that is more than a full time job. Um, so, I, you know, I, and the whole the whole curves like stuff and the re, and the, the re uh, districting, which which gave us uh, fewer councillors to ensure that we'd be closer to our residents because there'd be fewer of us to do the work. Which is actually the logic of, of, of the Kurzweil report and, and the subsequent re-boundary boundary, boundary process. Um, I, I still don't understand that logic, and I don't think I ever will. Uh, but that's what it did to us, and, and we are 101 councillors, and we have more residents per councillor than any other authority in the country. You know what? You know what did work? Uh, what? Ward officers. Because the ward officer had the authority for they were implied they were they were local uh, officers employed by the council employed by us because we are the council and uh, they was a good link and they got things done between the council and our local area uh, to, uh, working with the councillors obviously the councillors are very important because they are our direct uh, representation but then to have an officer there uh, who's uh, I know it's a lot of 21 or whatever wards you got, but to have all even share wards, to have an officer out here in the patch uh, responsible in leaking us, make sure we know what's going on, on policy and all the rest of it, he couldn't beat it. And we happen to have a good one. What was the name? Her, um, Ginny. 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 She was excellent. And, uh, and Barry, Barry as is, he was another one. They got things done and they worked, you know, all right. So, Anyway, let's, I'll finish that one. Uh, I, I can see Anne's got a hand up, so I'll come to her in a second. But I think also... I've forgotten what it was for. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to the Yardley Road, um, 
the uh, refuse came along this morning and left um, one part of the um, where the some of the bags are dumped from the flats above the shops in the right mess. So all obviously ripped up bag and it's being cleared. There's been um, a road sign down by um, towards Francis Road, opposite the La Cream or whatever it's called. Um, and the burst sandbag for about four weeks now since the work they did further up. Um, and when you, you say about the problem with the uh, um, flats above the shops, for some reason, the bit between Cottesbrook School and Florence Road don't seem to have a problem, although they've only got a narrow um, back uh, lane to the places. They don't appear to put out the bags in the same way. But the problem between Florence and Francis Road and also Cottesbrook to Elmden is, is quite um, a bad one. And also on the other side of the road isn't quite so bad. Also, number 41, um, the one with the tarpauling up, Forum did ask me to put a letter through the door, which obviously is only effective if they, can, if they actually... Um, visit the premises, asking them to clear the frontage up. And as Francis said, they managed to find out the landlord of the one property. I'm wondering if we can find out in some way the landlord of number 41 and and sort of send the letter directly to him instead of putting it through the letterbox. Your, your friend there is the land registry. He'll cost you three quid and they'll, they'll, they should tell you who owns the property. All oh, right. <laughs> Don't you get it free, being in Hounslow or the No, no, the MP doesn't get it free either. Um, <laughs> I've, I've had, to, had to pay for that on, on parliamentary expenses more than once. Um, uh, just to, uh, on a side there, Beverly's been posting comments in the chat, uh, and she makes makes very good points that uh, we'll have to remember that the council is half the size it was ten years ago. Um, yeah. we, we we don't we don't have the have the money or the people that we had, and I, I suppose <coughs> the question I was going to ask is: Do we? Is there a point to having a a proper <coughs> excuse me ward committee um, that actually has no resource? Do do we do we take? Beverly, stop realising the city, please. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I share your pain. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But they, they ought to be quite large wards. I mean, Acos Green is the biggest ward in the city and one of the biggest in the country, if not the biggest in the country. There, there, there are towns smaller than Acos Green with, with, counts, with more councillors. Um, but so I think if you're going to have... Um, a functional committee it has to have powers to do things and that means having a budget to do things I'm not, mm. not opposed to that but I, I think you have, it actually has to have a use just having a committee that meets and can vote on on things that then can't do I don't think there's a point to that but I do think there's a point to, to having something where we can get money and services down to a more local level and some local control over it that I'm not opposed to but uh, yeah, there there are a number of three hundred wards that are 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 bigger than us, but we we are we are still one of the largest around there, and the two two councillors. It's it's a bit it's a fair bit of work. I'll tell you that. And I don't know what to notice this, but there seems to be more work about them than there has been for a while. Um, well, there's are, a lot more case work coming through. You are well thought of, but, 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 but apart from that, um, we know you've been there. But uh, it doesn't change the fact that someone who influences things, who makes things change in the council, who can change things in the council for the better, who can look after the citizens? Possibly me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on my screen, you're pointing at David. No, <laughs> that doesn't work. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... Uh, one of those things, apparently, I'm one of the 10 people in charge of the city, which, which always terrified me when I wake up in the morning. Um, but I, I think in a way, of course, you can change things. You, you're the residents. You, you, you vote us in or vote us out. 
you have your chance again in in May next year to ha- have your views on whether either, both, or neither of us uh, should stay here. So you as residents have a chance to change that. John, I, I think we've made a clear that we're delighted with you both. Just disappointed that you haven't got more power to get things done. And therefore, uh, you know, clearly we're here because we're people who vote and will continue voting and respect our local councillors. But it doesn't alter the fact that we share the frustration that democracy isn't working for ACOX Green because things aren't changing. And I do think, I want to thank you, Beverly. You always take excellent minutes and manage those meetings and spread the message really well. Uh, I do think that we don't need a verbatim meeting. And it would take more endurance than mine to go through this, all of this again. But I do think that a brief summary of items discussed and actions taken are actions that it was impossible to take because of a lack of law or because of a lack of resources might be useful. We still have the Kerslake report. And the one bit of it that I really liked was that East Birmingham was neglected and ordinary citizens were neglected and that funding was going for major projects and not for the grassroots improvements that were needed. That part of Kerslake, I agree with. Uh, I do recognise that the resources weren't put into Birmingham to address that, but if we had a brief summary of those meetings showing that concerned citizens from East Birmingham actually did turn up and did raise those issues and did have greater local knowledge of what was happening well in advance of it reaching Whitehall or anybody with power to change things. It just, again, it's small steps, but it might support good councillors in doing their job. So I would say a return to a brief summary of the meetings. The pen is mightier than the recording. For one thing, it's easy to check for accuracy. Comments taken on board, Francis. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I was going to say, as it's drifting towards towards nine o'clock, uh, is there a, a, anything else anyone wants to raise? Yeah. Could I just report back on Western Dermal and Green, please, John? Oh, please. Uh, yes. We had a. Um, nearly £10,000 um, grant from um, Seven Trent to create a reed bed um, basically between the two bridges um, with the view to um, the stream th- flowing through it with then purified water also create a very um, useful um, wildlife habitat and um, we created the work, the work was done between the 2nd and the 6th of August uh, Rob Marta, uh, Marta actually um, project managed it. Very, very pleased with the result. Um, we seeded it all on um, on the Friday um, with um, wetland plants all along the side of the stream and uh, wildflowers on the bank. People seem to think it's a new um, grass area, so I've had to put some signs up to stop them walking all over it. But um, Jess Phillips is coming down on Friday, I think, John. I don't know whether you're coming down with her. Roger, you're very welcome to come. It's a publicity because we have to actually report back to Seven Trent um, and justify the, the funding on that. We've also got um, a major problem with our trees around that area, which these cracked willows, which are now, I don't know how tall they are now, but the branches just literally crack off. Um, we're having... We've, We've had a word with Mike Hinton about it, and um, it's agreed that really we need to look to having them felled in some way or other. So we've got uh, three quotes, two so far, and saw another um, um, tree surgeon today, and we'll make a decision about how we cope with them, whether we take them right down to ground level or whether we sort of pollard them in some way or other. So that's the ongoing thing. The, the fences um, along the canal bank is the big problem. We've been trying to raise funds to extend the fence where this the ground just sits dry right away down to the canal. We've applied to every single funding that we can we can go to with the help of um, is it Go Grants or Get Grants with Katie, somebody from City Council, all everybody we've applied for. Nobody wants. To uh, know, count the Canal and River Trust, although their boundary actually 
is beyond that along the footpath. They say it's not their responsibility in any way. So we um, unfortunately had some of the scaffolding poles stolen from the existing fence. But fortunately, the two, um, Luke and Anthony, who run a business in the older Camden site, have replaced them for us uh, just recently. So uh, Mike Pinton was going to try and sort that out. He's all, Mike Pinton is looking into um, trying to find a, a quote for the fencing that because basically we have no money at all. So um, and with the trees in desperate need of uh, felling, we have to prioritise that. But Mike Pinton's actually helping us out at the moment. But if anybody has any ideas, I know he is. He, he, Mike, uh, John knows very well where Mike Hinton is, but he's also a director on behalf of Birmingham Council of the Trust. So, so that's the situation at the moment. Oh, and uh, very kindly, um, Andy Court arranged to have our wildflower meadow cut. Um, he was also going to have the grass raked up and removed, but apparently the piece of equipment he needs is being repaired. So as soon as that's repaired, he will come and remove the grass which was cut last week. That was done last week. So that's the only other thing ongoing. But the football is incredible, and uh, and um, we survived the summer holiday with all the kids as well. So that was nice. I think that's it. Long live. Uh, thanks, Veronica. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, one, that's one of the absolute gems of ACOT's green, that is. I mean, many in green. I love that. Well, just to say thanks as well, John, to the, uh, your team that actually do, because they can't come on site to litter pick, but they do collect everything. And unfortunately, there was a big mattress, old mattress, and a whole bed dumped where our, at our entrance. So whilst they were collecting our legal bags, they also thankfully removed that. But that's what happened. And you put some, any bags anywhere and it attracts yep. everything and it be, that becomes dumping ground but thanks again to your team that, they are good they are, they are really are good. good I have <laughs> bumped into a couple of them when I've been collecting grey bags and I think hopefully they realise that we do appreciate what we do I, I will certainly get that, that pass oh, back um, and I think the work done there around, around the brook looks really good I think it's yes. much improved it. Yeah. And it will take a couple of years to develop it. And uh, as soon as the brambles grow back up again, and it will just, people will forget that there is an area there, but it um, will in, certainly improve the whole, especially the, the conservation side of it and attract <coughs> a lot of more wildlife and, and, and the flowers as well, pollinators and everything will, will be an, a real asset. All right. Is there anything more? <coughs> I'll you thank you, Just say thank you. Well yeah. done. Yes, no. thank you. When we when we gonna see Beverly again? Are we gonna when we gonna meet each other face to face? Is that on the plan? She's the face. Oh, what a... <laughs> well, that's picture. a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I don't know. Have we any guidance on, on going back to face-to-face -face oh, meetings? Oh, this has just been an absent. Um, okay. Yes, yes, that question. But, but yes. There is, um, there is, I think the guidance that we've been given is um, we can go back. Face-to-face -face meetings can happen, but the, build, the venue that we use have, has to have a COVID risk assessment. It's got to be COVID safe. So um, where we are, where we're... we're you want to go back to face to face meetings we have to make sure that um, we are still maintaining social distancing um at, you know we, we have to do it in, when we when we can actually go into an office which we can't at the moment we're also working from home or from wherever we're told to work so we have to make sure that social distancing measures have been placed um you know the room is well ventilated um obviously that will be a restriction on the numbers that can attend the meeting um you know, and, and it's just generally making people feel safe. And we need to make people aware of that. So if you do want to go back to face to face, those are the sort of things that we have to do. I know the sense that you use, I think, you know, that's probably going to be perfectly fine. But we just need to make sure that we can ha we have a copy of the risk assessment um, for the venue. 
and then we just put up, just need to make sure that when we do advertise the meeting and we do you know we do send the details out everybody knows what to expect and if it means room capacity is going to be be reduced then it means that not everybody who comes to the meeting will be able to get in. So those are sort of things that we need to be aware of. I know. I, know. I mean, I, I think, <laughs> Beverly, if we're going back to the Fox Rose Forum, I I would dream of a situation where we have to turn people away at the door because it's full. <laughs> I mean, well, people might fancy a night out council. They'll be thinking, oh, I haven't been out for the ages. I want to see. I want and to where see. better to go for free entertainment in a green? There is nowhere then, better. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, stranger things have happened. So, but so, so those are sort of things. We're not saying no. Um, and, and, you know, I have had wards, some my, you know, I have had other wards who would like to go back to face to face. And those are sort of things that we're exploring. So, um, again, you know, the board is in your court, really. Um, yeah, as long as there's a COVID risk assessment in place and you feel comfortable and everybody feels comfortable, then, you know, it's something that we can consider. But bearing in mind, it's going to get darker as well now. <laughs> my, my vote would be to go back to face to face next using Fox Hollis Forum, because as mm -hmm. John says, um, I don't think there's any meeting that we've had in the last, well, certainly, you know, since the last set of elections, as an example, that couldn't have been held under COVID secure policies. I actually, I have, I'd have to go back. I think this definitely predates John. The meeting that overwhelmed the room we were in at the time, and I don't think it was where it was, was after the decision was taken to close the coffee shop in the leisure centre. And yeah. that, that <laughs> absolutely swarmed the room. The room was, people were standing in the aisles. And it just seems odd to think of that. Um, I, but, um, I, the, the best one I, I can recall is the one where we were discussing the rollout of wheelie bins. Oh, probably. Yes. Oh, yeah. That that was well attended. That was in the <laughs> library. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I think it's unlikely that. We can have it. But if it, you know, if it happens, it happens, and we have to manage it. But I would like. I think it is time to go back to yeah. face to face. Provide you know, given that we've got somewhere that will uh, meet the need. My my yeah. question was, are we are we sort of um, is our timing dictated somewhat by the funding applications? Do we need to meet? At a particular time to ensure that we're we're sort of following through the process on that side. Are we? Is this for the celebrating communities fund? Yeah. yeah. No. I, I mean, the way in which the celebrating communities fund is supposed to work um, is that any project proposal there's supposed to be a separate meeting, really, oh, ideally. Yeah. So, so, um, so if you've got enough, if you've got enough proposals going through then yes, it makes sense. To it will make sense to have a separate meeting so you can discuss, um, you know, if you've got five or six, it makes, it will probably make sense to have a separate meeting to discuss those because that will then um, be just about the, those proposals. What you also need is more, you'll need more than six people attending the meeting so that they can actually vote on the proposals as well. So you can't have, um, and the six people won't include um, the project you know the applicants it's got to be six or more residents that will come along to you know to have a say or to have their vote on the proposals which is why it's really important it's really important when Kyneton's project comes to a meeting that people come out you know to you know to show their support so um but in some wards where um where attendance is low and they don't think they're going to get the turnout for the ccf um, then it does make sense to sort of have it together, um, you know, because people aren't going to want to come out twice to a meeting, a, ward me a normal ward meeting and celebrating Communities Fund voting meeting. But also think of your time as residents and councillors, you know, you just haven't, you might not have that time available. Um, but with round two, um, I mean, obviously the important thing is now to, to sort of, to work with Neil to see when we can actually put something together so that the funding for Kyneton's project is, you know, or, you know, the presentation is heard and then a decision is made as to, you know, what happens next. And then that will be the round one bit done. Um, but the next stage obviously is round two. So applicants will have until the 30th of, no of November to put something in. And then those meetings will probably take place um, 
in the new year, say about January, February time. So, um, so that's the sort of time scale that we're looking at. So really it's um, round one is the one that we need to sort of sign off. Um, but whatever happens, the money won't be lost. As long as we can get everything done, done and dusted by the early part of next year, then you won't lose. And, you know, and we have applications coming in, then the funding won't be lost to the ward. So it's important for people really to start thinking about um, putting stuff together. It's £35,000 for, for ACOC screen. And you want to make sure that none of that is lost after, the, you know, after next year. Beverly, hang on. Be Beverly, sorry. Um, can you, uh, I don't know if you can, or somebody, can they ask the organising committee of the Commonwealth Games or Council, it, are they doing anything for the uh, each of the wards? Are they supplying any banners or something? Welcome to the Olympic uh, Commonwealth people. Uh, or is it all down to the local area? No. Is the city, city going to supply any banners? I think that's, that's, that has been asked, but there's a Commonwealth legacy team that's that's doing all manner of things, to be honest. And we haven't been given, all we've been given at the minute is, is just information about the fund. Okay. Um, so all the things, the nice things that like you say about the banners and the flags and, you know, the, the pens and the badges, you know, we haven't got access to that information yet because you've got the Commonwealth legacy team that's looking at all, all sorts of stuff. I don't know whether or not you've got any further information, Councillor O'Shea. With your cabinet there, hat on. Yeah, I mean, there, there is certainly um, a plan for what well, they term city dressing as we get nearer to the nearer to the games. Um, I, I generally don't know how far out that reaches. That's not in my portfolio, but oh, um, we need sorry, to, I thought we'd do every time we get the gateways coming in. Yeah, we, we, oh, we definitely, definitely will be. Um, but I, I can't recall from the briefing whether whether the Warwick Crow was including that. It probably should be. I know the Coventry Road definitely is. So the the, the, the main the main John, four arteries in are definitely are. But John, whenever they have any big event at like the Yonix All England Badminton, which I go to. They have it all down small heat. They have it all down. Oh yes, that, that that'll be that'll be plastered. Do that, yes. They're going to go in big. Could I just say to Beverly? Um, I mean, she, if she wants involved in actually applying for the bid, I mean, I'm very well, happy to come on. And if you need people from the community to who aren't involved in the actual bid, I mean, I know I was involved on the committee with. With Kyneton originally, so I obviously have a vested interest in that particular thing. I don't know whether I'd have to, whether I would be of time, but I'm very well, uh, uh, you know, if I'm available to come and be there, I'm sure. So I mean, I mean, what will happen is, as, as I say, um, Neil Neil De Costa, who who's who's going to be the facilitator, who who is the facilitator for Yardley, and he's part of the team that I work for anyway. Um, we'll get together to sort some dates out. Obviously, with yourselves as councillors as well, and and with Kyneton, and once all that's you know, once we can actually agree a time and date, and the platform, whether it's face to face or whether it's online, we'll get the information out to everybody. We'll make sure that we give you everybody enough time, enough notice as well. So we're not going to say what well, we're doing it tomorrow. Um, we will need you know those discussions that need to be had and times and dates agreed and then we'll set something up and we'll let everybody know in the way that that you know that that we do now um so, so that's what will happen so so first things first we want to try and get um just look at trying to sign this off for um the youth project and then obviously as well we want residents to start thinking about round two and um, how they can get something together and get something in as well. And then what I will do, um, it'll be tomorrow now because it's um, a bit late, but what I will do is to send you out the links as well of people who can sort of, not that you need any help, but, you know, just generally for contacts that we, you know, you can always sound, use the sounding board for some of the things that you want to do. Um, so I can get that sent out as well, so that everybody's um, has got that information. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, as always, Beverly. Um, I'm quite happy to go back to in-person meetings if ever, everyone else feels that they're prepared to come along to them. I, I'd like to be able to offer, offer the hybrid option. I don't, don't quite see how we can. We haven't got hybrid. We haven't got the equipment. So oh, I know. <laughs> we, we should have. And, well, I think it involves laptops, cameras, screens, uh, mobile data. There's all manner of things. A camper van, probably. Um, yes, there's, yes, you know, to house all the equipment. So, um, I'm not absolutely convinced yeah. about that. There we go. <laughs> but yes, so, so I mean, again, we can, um, you know, I, I mean, the day that I've got penciled in for the next ACOC screen meeting, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was sometime in December. Oh, I think. No, we haven't. I did, we haven't penciled in the date. Um, so that's something we need to think about the next meeting date, um, you know, for the ward meeting and how we want to how we want to play that. But also this option with um, online meetings, you know, that's here. I think that's here to stay. So, um, you know, you can have you can you can use use both, not not at the same time, obviously. But you know, if you wanted to do, to have a couple in in person meeting and then. Um, one or two online, you know, that's that's totally up to you. That's an option that you'll have going forward. OK, I, I sort of don't think it's impossible. We, we, have, to, we have to look at it. OK, well, they, 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 they've they got Wi-Fi in the in, the, uh, in Fox Hollies. Yeah, but I, I think when we actually asked the question um, of IT, um, well, we're still waiting for an answer, but um, I think it, from what I understand, this involves um, more than one laptop. And um, like I said, there's a connective, there's screens in, and microphones and, and things like that. And you'll certainly need more than one person doing yeah, it at the moment. True. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, so I wouldn't be able to do it all. Um, so we'll definitely need more, you know, a team of people doing it. Um, so, so I'm not, so it's, one of those things it's, it's not like city council where that's streamed straight onto youtube and they've they've got an army of staff that are putting that together there's just at the moment it's just me in my garden shed sort of <laughs> trying to trying to run the meeting okay so if we can look to an in-person meeting covid um, permitting in december okay Early December is probably good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got when a whole feeling it won't be our yeah. choice. Okay, right. Okay, that, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So I'll look at some dates, and then um, I'll need to take into account as well. Fox Hollies. Do they still have the meeting on the third Wednesday at the hall? Generally, it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll look at some dates, and and I'll, and, I'll, and and we can take it from there. And as I said, we'll get back to everybody with um, the details about the Commonwealth Games cele Celebrating Communities Fund meeting as well. OK. OK. Um, if there is nothing else. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. And we'll Thank see you. you in December. And good night. Yep. Take care. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.